Hello everyone, I'm Carl Zielinski and today we're looking at iterating and slicing UTF-8 strings in the Odin programming language. So I have here a string uh, that just says important words and you can loop over the string like this and the loop variable r here will for each lap of this loop be of type rune and rune is the type of a single UTF-8 character. And since Odin supports UTF-8, you can also loop over non-English strings. So here we have some Chinese text and we can just like above loop for R in string like this. And then if we print each character, then we get three separate lines like this. Now we can also slice strings like this. So we have this string here and we say substring is string and then we say seven colon and then nothing. So this means that start at the seventh letter and then make a slice that looks at the rest of the string so it will just pick out the from the seventh character here up to the end so when you print this it will just say cat with the example of the chinese text you might try to do the same so you might be like okay i have three characters here so i make a substring like this i i, I go from the first index here so you think that you would get these two characters right but if you print this, then you will see that you get something like this. It says some funny question marks and then the last two characters. So what's happening here is that all strings in Odin are UTF-8 strings. And UTF-8 strings, each character in a UTF-8 string can take different amounts of bytes to store. So these English characters up here just take a single byte. However, these Chinese characters here take more than a single byte. So this character here takes three bytes and this one takes three bytes and this one takes three bytes. And we have an example down here where it says, it says length of this string is nine. This gives the byte length, not the length of how many characters it is. And this slicing operator works with bytes as well. So you're taking, you're starting, you're skipping the first byte, which means that you're essentially taking this character and sort of cutting the data for it in half. Like you take, you remove one third of the data and then you're keeping the two-thirds of the remaining data. So that's why you get these two funny characters and then you get the rest. There is a way to uh, get how many runes is inside it. So each of these, you, they have, like the, the, the type, we, we saw the rune be mentioned above and rune is the type used for uh, you, a single UTF character in Odin. So you can ask, uh, the if you import the uh, core strings you can ask it how many runes does a string have and then it says three which is what you expect right so since this works with bytes is there a way to make sort of a substring where we can count the number of runes instead of the number of bytes because like i said this is three bytes so is there a way to kind of count this as a single character instead of doing it byte by byte and there are some uh, helper procedures in the strings uh, package so you can say like this strings.substring from and then you say okay from the first character and then it goes onward this is like uh this is similar to do, to doing the doing like this uh, like that but it counts in a uh, number of runes instead so this would then give you the correct result and there is like one called just substring where you can do like that and there's also a substring two where you say the upper bounds. There are some interesting caveats here. If we look at this thing here, here we have a string that's sort of like a G with two dots over it. And if we loop over this, like th this looks like a single character, right? So you would assume this is a single rune. But if we loop over this and print it, then it first prints this thing and then prints this thing. So this thing is called a like this combined letter is called a grapheme and there are some UTF characters that are sort of overlaid on top of whichever character that is before them. So in this string there is first a G and then there's this funny two dots and this is actually two runes. So you can't actually always trust, like if, if you did like this kind of UTF-8 substring thingy with the rune index, then this would actually be two separate runes. So that's just good to know yeah, and, and, and it's funny that you know you have Chinese characters like this. The, the, these are single runes but here we have something that 
to, to, to a U European like me look simpler, but it's actually two, two runes. And to make things worse, you can like, I, you know, I can, I'm Swedish and I can tell you, I can type this letter, this one here. And this one is a single rune, right? But I can also make this letter by putting the A uh, before these two magical dots. And this is now two runes and this is one rune. So you can also construct these letters in, in different ways. When I learned about these grapheme things, you know, I, I thought I, I knew enough about UTF-8, but when I learned about this, sort of, I, I, I almost felt like never making a program that had strings again. <laughs> but uh, it's probably fine because this kind of operation where you do a substring, you know, hard code a substring like this, you don't really do it that often in a, in a big program. Usually if you have a UI program, maybe you have some way to select text on the screen, then you loop over the characters and you know where they are on the screen. So you can sort of make a, a range of which are you actually selecting and, and stuff like that. But it they, they are a bit troublesome, these characters. Like if I try to copy this and, and paste it here in, in Sublime Text I'm using, it doesn't work properly. This works here because it's after a new line, I think. If I put it, it doesn't, yeah, it. I can copy this and put it here. And it just feels a bit like it's not uh, that doesn't work that well to to work with these these kind of uh, augmenting uh, characters. But just good to know that they exist. That's it for today. I am currently working hard on editing my Odin book. It will be released digitally in late November 2024, and. If you want to know more about that, then I have a separate video on the channel. I can link that in the description also. And if you want updates on when the book releases and stuff, then you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Happy programming and bye bye.